This is the Spirit and Wellness Show. News and information from a higher perspective. With your host, Harry Wilkinson. Hello, this is your host, Harry Wilkinson, and welcome once again to the Spirit and Wellness Show. Or for the first time, if this is your first time uh, checking in with us and finding out what this is all about, this is the show where we take a look at the days and weeks events, happenings in the world, happenings in politics, uh, technology, health, uh, everything that sort of interacts with us on a daily or weekly basis through our uh, various forms of media that, uh, let's face it, can stress us out if we let them. We take a step back and we look at these things from a higher perspective. We take the higher perspective which says that everything in our world is a creation of our own. And I mean that on a variety of levels. Uh, from the very mundane personal level to choices we make to what I call the level of uh, divine mind or oneness uh, that is the place where we are our highest selves. I come from a belief system and it's not a religious uh, belief. Uh, it is a spiritual understanding that we are more than our physical bodies, that we uh, exist at a higher level metaphysically and that this higher us or this larger us creates the world that we experience and creates and changes the way we experience it and as we connect to that greater self as we become more aware of it our circumstances change the world's circumstances change and my uh, strong belief is that as all people evolve in their understanding, their spiritual understanding, and they are, this changes our world. And you can see it very clearly if you think back or if you know uh, of your history pretty well, if you think about the things that are in the world now. As tough as it may seem, as scary as it may seem, think about that in comparison to how the world was 50 years ago or 100 years ago. Think of the things that are being done, taken care of, or at least awareness has begun. Everything from you know, devastating illnesses in, in countries around the world that uh, can now be reversed uh, to uh, greater rates of, uh, of uh, childhood uh, mortality, uh, uh, lower rates of childhood mortality, pardon me. In other words, children in poorer and uh, third world countries have access to better health and food, slowly but surely, than, than they have ever. So we're see seeing rising rates of, uh, of uh, success in those areas. Think of as much as we might think of our world as being in conflict often. Think of the fact that there have been no wars between uh, the major countries uh, anywhere in Europe or the United States. That is a significant change having come through World War I and World War II. We've eliminated uh, wars that could have gone on for a very long time. Now, of course, there's always the concern of backsliding that we might go back to. 
the way things were before. And while that might happen uh, briefly, it's not likely. And it's not likely because once you get used to a certain expectation in the world, once you get used to things being a certain way, we tend to do whatever it takes to make sure that they continue. So this is a process, but ultimately to me it's a process of uh, awareness, spiritual awareness. And I get it that some people find that word uh, troublesome, spirituality. It's one of the topics that was most popular last year, and we're going to talk about it uh, more on the show today spirituality, what it really means, how it's been sort of conflated with religion, but uh, the fact that uh, spirituality and religion are often completely different things. And many people, while they understand a sense of spirituality, aren't necessarily religious. So we're going to be talking about the rising rate of SBNR, spiritual but not religious types. And I guess if I had to categorize myself, I would put myself in that category. Um, have been there for a long time, even when it wasn't such a popular idea. And uh, glad to see more folks joining. <laughs> um, so no, the show is not a religious show. I do talk about religion as it affects people's lives and, and uh, the different religions. And I do it as a way to sort of maybe help people understand the different takes because it can often be confusing uh, to hear about uh, you know religions may, you, that you may not understand or, or or you know a little bit about but you don't really understand why they do certain things so we talk about that and that was another uh, popular show in 2017 where we talked about new thought religions uh, religions like uh, science of mind and Christian science and what the differences between those are and they are, are many by the way uh, and so uh, we kind of really got into the weeds with that and uh, examined the different uh, philosophies behind it and the commonality that they have I mean these are all churches that um, espouse a belief in a higher power that is not necessarily a um, A figure, in other words, uh, a, an old man with a beard or a male persona, even. Um, and they also uh, all uh, have sort of the belief of the healing abilities of the mind. So uh, that's one instance in which I have, you know, delved into religion a bit. And they also talk about religious, uh, you know, on holidays, we talk about the religious. Uh, significance of certain holidays and where they come from, I find it fascinating uh, from a historical perspective and from a uh, you know uh, a humanist perspective because these are things that affect human beings in one way or another. So I think that they are worthy of talking about without getting into a um, dogmatic insistence of uh, you know what you ought to be doing or you should be following and what you should believe and what happens to you if you don't believe this certain way and it's just, that is not what that's not what goes on in the show so uh, in any case uh, we've got a lot to to do today uh, we're going to talk about as I mentioned SBNR spiritual but not religious we've got wellness tips for you for 2018 and I'm going to introduce a new segment uh, to the show that I haven't done before but based on some responses that I have gotten from listeners, I feel like it's something that uh, listeners can benefit from. I feel like I can benefit from it, too. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, meditations. Uh, and each week I'll have a segment on that, so we'll get into that in a moment. But uh, first, let's, let's get into uh, what we, were, we touched on a little bit last week as we talked about... Uh, the popular uh, programs uh, on this show from last year. 
And, uh, oh, by the way, before I forget, uh, let me encourage you to please reach out to me. Uh, and if you've listened to the show and you have things you might like to say or questions or, uh, or just, um, you know, uh, reactions, uh, you can find me on Facebook. It's uh, H. Wilkinson Media. Just go to Facebook, type in H. Wilkinson Media. It will take you to the Metaphysical Media page where I post uh, recordings of the show, uh, sometimes articles that I've talked about uh, during the show, and there's plenty of space for you to like if you are so inclined, and you can also leave messages for me. Uh, I find that to be one of the best ways to, to get involved. I am also uh, starting a spirit and wellness network on a new platform called the Mighty Networks. And so I'll have more information about that. If you would like information about that, again, go to the Facebook page, H. Wilkinson Media, and uh, look me up. Send me a post. I will, uh, I will invite you to join the Mighty uh, Spirit and Wellness Network. Okay? So I hope to hear from you. Now, SBNRs. All right. So... Uh, you know, it, this has been a, a category that's been growing. Uh, Pew Research did, did, a, did a, a research uh, in 2014 uh, that showed about 20% of people uh, considering themselves to be spiritual but not religious. Then in 2017, an organization called the Public Religion Research Institute, PRRI for short, uh, also did their uh, survey and found about the same. They, theirs was estimated about 18% uh, as opposed to the Pew Researchers, 20%. But, you know, these sorts of uh, figures do uh, have a, you know, margin for error of about 3%. So it's looking like about the same amount uh, are still identifying uh, three years later. So this has um, been a trend and something that uh, seems to be significant enough. People are, are taking notice of the fact that uh, many folks are, are leaving their religious identity behind and uh, or the religious entity identity that was uh, sort of carved out for them in varying ways, whether it's from the community they grew up in, from their parents, from uh, just basic assumptions and then they start to question perhaps and when they start to uh, wonder what's right for them uh, they tend to move into a different space so there's an article uh, with uh, some comments from a number of people who uh, consider themselves spiritual but not religious and I think it's very informative I think you can probably if you're listening to this show now you you might be one of those people I would tend to, with, with the title of the show, that tends to attract certain types of people, uh, and uh, spiritual but not religious types often uh, are interested in uh, shows that deal with, uh, you know, wellness and spirituality and that sort of thing. So perhaps you'll find some uh, commonality here. Uh, so uh, in, in this article, uh, it profiles a number of people uh, who are spiritual but not religious, and uh, talks about how these spiritual experiences for these people can come from unlikely places. There's a uh, Dane Quentin Gore, for instance, an artist in Arizona, and he grew up uh, Southern Baptist. Uh, but what he's done is uh, to have his art practice sort of replace an approach to organized religion, which he found, uh, quote-unquote, obtuse and hopelessly convoluted. He says he finds religious meaning in creating powerful art. Ceremonies, to me, have now become my puppet shows. All of these things are the closest I get to religious experience these days. Making art and puppetry are my transcendent moments. Uh, and speaking as a creative person, and a, as, a, as a writer and performer, I can certainly uh, attest to the fact that um, those things have always provided spiritual sustenance.